professional. Um, she had a very, very clear idea of what the sovereign of this country should do. Uh, I um, produced her Christmas board day broadcasts for a number of years. The very first time I did it, um, there was a technical problem on the take. <laughs> I, I hadn't noticed it. I, well, there's no way I could have noticed it. Uh, and I was, she did it absolutely perfectly the first time. And I was so <laughs> relieved. I was saying, oh, thank, thank you so much. So, <laughs> and the cameraman came and said, there's been a problem. And this, what? <laughs> um, I said, I'll tell you later. And so I had to say, uh, um, it was perfect. Um, and thank you very much. Uh, but would you mind doing it again? And she said, not at all. Didn't, didn't ask, didn't say, oh, the stamp of a tiny jeweled heel, you know. <laughs> uh, no. She just said, say what? I'll do it again. Which she did, of course, flawlessly. And that was, that was very typical. I think there was another occasion when you had to ask for a change of outfit <laughs> <laughs> for one of the broadcasts. Can you just take me through the yes. delicacies of that and how it went? Well, well um, the, first, the first Christmas broadcast I uh, was allocated to do, uh, I went to see the Queen's private secretary, who was uh, uh, Sir William Heseltine, who was an Australian and a very down-to-earth Australian. And one of the first things to do, of course, was to select the room. And that was, um, it had certain to be certain things. I mean, it had to be a room where there was quietness, uh, a room where we could get our gear in and looked suitable and so on. We eventually found one. And so we went back to Sir William's office and he said, well, now the next thing is, what does she wear? And I said, oh, <laughs> uh, I've, I've no idea. Um, and we had various discussions. The room it itself had a green uh, wallpaper, so uh, I said, as long as it's not green. Uh, Sir William said afterwards <laughs> that the um, Queen wanted to know why I was keen on a, a non-green thing. And he said, because of the wallpaper. And uh, because either that would change the costume or actually change the wallpaper. <laughs> and the Queen said, change the wallpaper? Have you any idea how much that would cost? <laughs> And, and I think she meant it, you know. <laughs> Over the years that you were doing the Queen's Christmas broadcast, I mean, all of us who've, you know, we've all grown up watching them. How did they change over the years? How did she change over the years? She became more and more skilled at um, maintaining a position, maintaining um, a way of behaving and of speaking and of mastering a brief and doing a job with conviction. Of course there was small talk that you had to do. I mean, think of how many thousands of people she must have met. Uh, and every one of them uh, is going to go away and say, and she asked me this and she asked me that and I said that and so on. Um, so that she, ha she had um, a mastery of all those things and wholly admirable. And the, the, so many years that you would have come into contact with her in your, with your various professional hats on, but I, I suppose a lot of people particularly will reflect on the beautiful documentary that you made a few years ago, The Queen's Green Planet. Give me an insight into that because it, it absolutely charmed the audience. It got bumper viewing figures. There was something about your relationship with Her Majesty the Queen that people were really enchanted by. Well, if, if that was so, and I would be delighted if it were indeed so, it was because uh, she uh, wished it to be that way. And um, because I have produced a Christmas broadcast and because of um, there are various charities in which I've become involved in that she's also been involved in, and we have met on those occasions, uh, I don't think she thought I was a stranger, you know, to put it uh, modestly. She did get you to go and sort of check the trees for you. Oh, you yes, she did. Had you sort of scuttling off to that, check various trees. That was, a, that, was, that was <laughs> awful for me because <laughs> she planted certain trees when her children were each one of the birth. And she asked me, 
<laughs> just to check on the on the notice which said what the truth and I couldn't find my glasses and not only could I not find my glasses but the placard itself was overgrown with a sort of moss so I had to make a kind of guess which was wrong <laughs> so that, that we were had this this conversation in which we threw the conversational ball one to another and it was uh, a great <laughs> a great privilege What's your favourite personal memory of her? There must be so many. <laughs> um, it's been a long relationship. I suppose the most precious things were, were hearing her laugh. Um, not, and, and easy to make a polite laugh, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when she, she laughed in a genuine way, um, and if there was something funny, she laughed in a genuine way. She wasn't putting it on. And that made it very easy because she was the expert at, at, at like getting people to relax. Uh, when you met her, you were well aware that you were in the presence of someone extremely important in our society. And yet she made it seem that you were meeting another human being with exactly the same sort of conditions that all human beings have.